Newsflash, supplements are largely a waste of money. However, there are a few out there that are actually quite valuable. Believe it or not, there's a supplement that's been out there now for decades, has thousands of studies, is great if you wanna build muscle, get stronger, improve your health, improve your longevity, reduce depression, give you better energy for your heart, help your liver function better. No joke, I'm not making this up. This is all backed by data. It's creatine. Creatine is one of the best supplements anybody can take for any goal. It's amazing. Now, yes, there are individuals out there who might not feel great when taking creatine. You get gastro distress. You'll know if you take it. Other than that, unless you're told you shouldn't take creatine by a doctor, a specialist, you should probably take it. It's good for you. You know what's funny about this is how uh, widely spread this has become. So now there is so many different types of creatine for yeah. marketing purposes. And the best stuff is the best stuff. Best stuff is the good old monohydrate. Plain, yeah. That's plain it. old monohydrate cheap stuff. That's it. Nothing else added Nothing to added it. to it. Yeah. No flavors. Just it's simple. Just the raw form. Yeah. You know what's funny is that uh that maybe I, we were one of the first by the way, I'm gonna say this quite confidently. We've been on air now for almost nine years, Doug. Yeah, almost nine years. Holy cow. Okay, it's been a long time. We were one of the only, if not the only people in our space who were talking about the health and longevity benefits of creatine. Uh, yeah. Nine years ago, everybody knew about the strength building and all that stuff. Nobody was talking about health and longevity. Now, lots of data is showing um, its benefits. In fact, uh, I just read a study on its antidepressive effects yeah. that you give it to people <laughs> who are mildly depressed and creatine seems to lift them out of depression. This is a mental, like, this is like uh, like how you perceive the world, supplementing with something like creatine. Um, it's incredible. It's good for the liver. It's good for the heart, uh, the muscles, of course. Uh, it, it shows a cognitive boost. You actually see improvements in people's IQ scores when they take creatine. It's, it's crazy. It's so funny. When we first started, we were just um, talking about, especially because that segment – of supplements was always so heavily performance based. And then we're trying to like convince, you know, some of these bros in the gym, like, well, maybe there's some adaptogens and maybe there's yeah. like some things over here on the wellness side that might help and contribute, you know, meanwhile, all along, like creatine uh, keeps proving itself to have worth in so many uh, other directions. Wellness wise, it's just mind blowing. Yeah. For, for someone who's like, well, why, how can I do all those things? So all this, just real kind of low-level general breakdown. What creatine does is it increases the amount of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, I'm saying that right, ATP that is available to your cells. ATP is energy for your entire body. All of your cells, most of them, uh, operate uh, with ATP. It's like, the, it's like the energy of the body. Now, the reason why you get stronger when you have more ATP is because ATP is the is a source of energy for power and for strength. But ATP is needed for brain function, organ function. As you age, your mitochondria has trouble producing as much energy. So having more ATP is a good thing. Creatine also is good for people who have issues with methylation processes because when you supplement with creatine, your body now has uh, is able to dedicate more of its resources towards uh, methylating. So people who have issues with like absorbing B vitamins and stuff, find improvements uh, with creatine. It's, it's going to be one of those supplements that's going to eventually be recommended across the board. Like, and I'm not this, I'm not making this recommendation now because there's not much data on this, but I bet you it's going to be for kids. It's going to be for pregnant women. It's going to be for elderly already are starting to get uh, recommended for creatine. So it's, it's pretty wild. And it has a lot of studies. It's one of the most studied uh, supplements that's out there. So it's not like a, we're just like basing it off of a couple studies. There's like thousands. That we, get, we get asked constantly about um, where to get creatine. I think you can get it just about anywhere. Probably what I would spend a little more money on, I think besides going through a reputable brand, because that's just like I would recommend with protein powder, right? Protein powder, you can find all over the place. Um, you know, going with a brand that you, you trust uh, instead of trying to save $5. I think there's some value there. And then the second thing with creatine 
is uh, micronized, right? Or micronized? Is that right? Yeah, saying that right? It just makes it easier so to it, mix. And- yeah, that I I I would pay a little extra for that because that makes the difference. You don't like drinking sand? Yeah, <laughs> it always ends up like that, right? Yeah, yeah. or it's just frustrating because it's like stuck at the bottom or stuck with the stuff, and it's just like I feel like oh. I'm never getting all of it. Where yeah, if it's, it's a little rough, yeah. Otherwise, it, uh, if you get the micronized, it like dissolves yeah. really well. Legion has a pretty good so they combine it with uh, L carnitine, L tartrate. Yeah, he has some recovery stuff with it. It's in his recharge, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and that uh, combination is good for muscle recovery and enhanced absorption. So it's like another level up. I mean, all the stuff I said about creatine, you can get from just pure creatine. Um, but Legion's got a nice combination if you want to kind of go with like the performance uh, type of route. So then was like Bang, did they they did the micronized kind of infuse? Like what, what kind of, I always was very questionable about like what, uh, you know, kind of quality was in those drinks with creatine wise. Like what? Bro, all you have to do is see the CEO to no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, can you please put a picture yeah, of the CEO? Yeah, please put him like right here. Yeah. Like right That's enough, enough here, said. Like, right he looks like, like yeah. uh, he looks, looks like, like you should totally trust him. Yeah. yeah. It's like you should totally He trust looks him. like if, <laughs> if, if, if when you look at a can of bang, if you could turn it into a person. Yeah. Like he's got a trench coat, yeah. you know. And he's, have you ever he's seen him before, like, Andrew? Hey, yeah, yeah. I believe he's Try actually been drinks. removed as CEO. Has he? Yeah, the guy well, they, that you're thinking about. They sold, right? I th- uh, he, yeah, I'm not sure. Somebody just acquired him, I thought. Who, Monster, Monster. bought him? Yeah, because oh they were in God. a lawsuit Oh, wow. uh, for a long time. There. So in March of 2023, the founder and CEO, Jack Owak, was removed from the company. Oh, so that's him, huh? Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Too bad. That guy was great. <laughs> He's you see him at the uh, casinos. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, but it's this. It's uh, it's. I mean, we keep reading studies on this compound, and it's like, I mean, it's remarkable. Um, all of the benefits is almost like, like nothing negative. The only people that I think would be advised not to supplement with it are the kidney. Well, uh, yeah. Issues. Y- y- well, yeah. If you're like on dialysis, I mean, you'll yeah. know because your your nephrologist or your doctor will tell you They'll not to tell take you. Anything. Yeah, they'll say don't do this, don't do that. Um, but everybody else, it's uh, it's something you should take. In fact, there's some studies that suggest that taking as much as 10 grams a day is better for cognitive performance than the typical five um, that we always uh, recommend. Hmm. So, and again, it's inexpensive. And I've been supplementing with it almost nonstop since I was 16, yeah. which all this good news that I'm reading, I didn't supplement it that long for that long because I thought it'd be good for me, <laughs> be, tr- truth be told. I'm just happy that it turns out it was good for me. <laughs> yes. Well, I've been I was, taking it for I was right on track. For so damn long. But um, but yeah, it's something that you pretty much everybody will gain some kind of health benefit uh from taking. And then if you work out, it's one of the few things you'll know when yeah. you take it. Well, I mean, are there any other I mean, because you're you're not gonna I mean, on some level, like supplementing with protein. Sure. Uh, in a form will have a lot of carryover in the wellness direction. But like there's really not another like performance type supplement that I speculate would be tested for a lot of these other things that it could help with. No. Uh, so here's what's, so this is the timeline, right? Like ephedra is not going to really no, no, you know, it's help your health. This is, here's the timeline. I remember when creatine first hit the market, uh, one of the most popular brands was uh, EAS at the time, Bill Phillips put it out and it, it just immediately exploded because uh, it was like a supplement that worked. Like nothing else worked, right? You took a supplement, I don't know, is it working? You take creatine and you're five to 10 pounds stronger on all your lifts within a couple of weeks. That's like standard. That's typically what people will, will feel right away. You got better pumps, better performance. So it exploded. And then because it actually caused like actual strength gains, immediate negative like publicity, right? Immediately it was like, yeah. is creatine safe? Should it be banned? Is it a steroid? Yeah. Is People, it good for you? Athletes are dropping dead. There was like all kinds of crazy misinformation uh, in the very beginning of it. Like it was like some crazy yeah. steroid. Yeah. It's going to be really bad for your kidneys. It's, oh, it's going to damage your liver. I remember all this, you know, kind of coming out. And then more and more, they kept studying it and it went from performance to, um, to cognitive health mm-hmm. to longevity so now they're doing all these studies on longevity and creatine. And um, I mean, it's it's uh, it's pretty remarkable. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale on some workout programs. Our beginner strength training program, MAPS Starter, is 50% off. And then we have a bundle of programs, MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime. That's our starter bundle. That's also 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show.
Well, I usually take uh, what you say with a grain of salt, Sal. Um, <laughs> Where are we going with this? Just, Where are we going with this? Just because, you know, like. Snell in a commercial he's, coming he's up. very right adamant now. about, like, you know, he delivers it with such conviction. Uh, but no, I use the um, uh, Caldera and I use it for my, my sunburn. It works. And it actually, like, it started to really help the healing process. And I, cause I was already starting to kind of flake and get dry and like, uh, and, and I was like, Oh my God, dude, I'm just going to be like, uh, you know, when a snake like sheds its exoskeleton, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I was pretty sure like my whole body was going to do that. And so yeah. I started like lathering it all over myself and I'm sure like lotion would have helped too, but <laughs> I was like, since he brought it up, you know, I'm just going to give it a whirl dude. and it, I don't know, dude, so I'm going to make Something it, to it. I'm going to make a confession. I know Adam's been doing this, uh, for psoriasis, but I'm going to make yeah. a confession. You're not. The oil is called the good, the good serum, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a small bottle and it's like this big and you put like a couple drops on your hands and you use it on your face. It's really good for your face. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's a very um, concentrated, high quality product. It lasts a long time if you just use it on your face. Yeah. Yeah. But the cost, I mean, you know, things that are typically really good typically cost more because of the process. And so it's, it's but it lasts a while if you just use it on your face. Now I'm going to full disclosure. I've been using it everywhere. It is better than like any lotion. Everywhere? Like, like everywhere. Like almost everywhere, everywhere Justin. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> I'm just I'm but it's getting clarity here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what yeah. are you doing in there? Yeah. No, I uh, it like it um, like instead of lotion on my arms or my knees or whatever, yeah. I'll do a little of that. Better than any lotion I've ever used. And, yeah. and I'm I'm yeah. sure I'd love to see them go in that direction for sure. I mean you, you go through it a, is helpful. You man. go through a bottle pretty quick like I feel that, like they are I mean they did they did the soap they're moving, I mean I wonder if they have what their plans are to continue. I mean the company is still growing so I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with some sort of a, a lotion or something oh, yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, it's so good a, for the skin. A body oil or yeah. body rub or something yeah. like that. Where were you most sunburned, on your shoulders? Yeah, it was on my shoulders and then, like, my upper back. And so, yeah, I was putting that on there and having Courtney kind of rub that in. Bro, you're like, you're such a superhero. I know you feel like this is a compliment, but I'm actually going to go negative. I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, tell me more, dude. You know how you, know, you read kind of <laughs> Tell you the shit show and yeah, tell me no, you right now. You know when you read, uh, kind of like, comic books and, don't, like... Don't compare me to Aquaman, though. Stop. Okay? <laughs> No, yeah, he's that. the worst superhero. Yeah, you know, you know, when you read a superhero, they're like all like strong, whatever. That's Justin, like super amazing. Yeah, they have you a weakness know. though. There's always oh, something, they always right? Do. They always do. We, if you put Justin in the sun, ninety five percent of his strength He'll and energy collapse. is gone He'll within collapse. two minutes. It depends on how intense it is. Yeah, <laughs> where were sure. we just at? Tricky. Was, oh, we were walking, bro. That's we right. were going for a we were walk. For a little ten minute oh, walk. I and just a second. I, forgot I can't about do that. this much longer. Hey, I thought he was so hot. I bro. And I'm not, well, I, yeah, it was hot. I don't know. Like, there's just like a certain tolerance I have. And like, sometimes if I'm already hot and then I go out and like be physically active in the hot, in the heat, like it just You're exaggerating. Me. We went for a stroll. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, hey, let's go, like for a, yeah, really, let's go for a walk. It's like 82. Yeah, let's go for a walk. Hey, the look on his face is like, and he's under his I was breath. dying. Because he doesn't complain. Justin never complained. Yeah. He'll die. And yeah. what happened to Justin? Yeah. He had a heart attack. Never told us. Yeah. He's walking. I'm looking at him like, hey, what's up? You know, what's going on? He's like, yeah. fuck. He's like, I, I got to walk in the shade. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot and he takes his shirt off and uh, he was like struggling yeah. <laughs> I was. it was embarrassing yeah. it wasn't good oh man it was not a good look I'm like oh what's happening yeah. Yeah, I was dying <laughs> that's why I, I like, thought I was gonna pass out that's why you're like a superhero yeah. you know I mean? that's why I know if I were gonna tangle with Justin I'd turn up the heat real quick yeah. Did, by the way you mentioned we mentioned Monster I think because the CEO guy went to Monster do yeah. you ever look at the conspiracy theory around the Monster Oh, the, the six six six. Yeah. yeah, you ever see that? No. Yeah. You ever saw that? No. That the that so the, 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 the claw three marks. Spikes. Yeah, yeah. three spot the spikes or whatever. It looked like there's claw like represents like six six six, and there's all this other like symbolism and imagery I around it. I have never uh -huh. heard of that before. That is yeah, satanic. Yeah. yeah. Isn't yeah. that great? Yeah, it's 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 good. I time. mean, did they connect anything else to like the? Owner there was a bunch CEO of stuff. Maybe I mean, it, at least Liquid Death went all in on that, right? Like, yeah, they, they just did seances and yeah, things. They, they, like, just, some, like, they almost went too, they went too far it. for me. They, they went, went way too far. I, I think they it was one hundred percent went too they far. They jumped a the shark. I think it was really funny. like I don't want you really to freaking yeah, yeah. have Satan in my wallet. Yeah, I was like, I don't need that inside me. What does that say right there, Doug, about the the monster energy drink? Yeah, this woman claims that monster any energy drinks uses uh, satanic imagery mm. to promote antichrist agenda. So, oh yeah, oh, yeah. but I don't really see the six 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 and the claw marks. The logo, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, speaking of antichrist stuff, did you see the? Uh, I mean, the mass media. You gotta love the media machine. I hate it. Uh, coming after In and Out 
for making it a rule for them to not wear mask in there as employees. I, I hate it. So they so by the way, Hebrew numerals. That's what it is. There it is. They're all they're three Hebrew numerals ah. that mean six six six. Now it's just, crazy. Just snuck that in. And then it's monster. Come yeah. on, bro. Yeah. Of course. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Of interesting. course. Interesting. You know how you get all mean so when you deliver drink one? it, you guys. You know how when you drink one, you get all weird at them? Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah, yeah. You're getting possessed. Uh, anyway, yeah. so what were you saying about the media? So, oh, yeah, they're I mean, I'm a rock star guy. Uh, uh, in and out, I <laughs> guess, as uh, made it in, like, across five different uh, in and out locations, have now made it you know mandatory that you cannot wear a mask. Oh, employees work. can't. Yeah, yeah. I know. And the media is attacking them? Yeah, yeah. T- talking uh, about the hypocrisy you, around or whatever. Before it COVID, before COVID, before the world went crazy, and if you're listening to this right now and you're like, the world didn't go crazy, you should probably go see somebody because it did go crazy. Yep. Before COVID, no company would allow you to cover your face when exactly. you're working with uh, the public. That was normal. Yeah. Could you work anywhere yeah. and wear a mask over your face and help people or whatever? You're just going to dismiss the fact it's hard to understand you. <laughs> I remember like asking this lady that was like, like behind huh? the counter. Yeah. Huh? And I felt, I'm just like, oh, like yeah. just, it's so frustrating. Yeah. It's like, I can't like pull it down and we can have a conversation. By the way, there's a big difference between a company saying it and the government saying it. Very different. If I operate a business and I tell you, yeah. You got to wear pigtails to work here. That's my job, my company. I should yeah. be able to do that. Yeah. Sure. If the government comes in and says all your employees need to wear pigtails, well, now yeah. I got a problem. With yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So that's the big, uh, big difference. I just thought that was funny. And then you know, in, at the same time, what we had news what last week come out the new CDC numbers on COVID. What do they attribute? Oh, don't do that. Oh. One third. Are we talking 30 about, are we talking about fraud percent. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let's let's all let's all pause for a second because I'm gonna yeah. get, I'm gonna get so annoyed. Is there any? conspiracy theory that was floated or labeled conspiracy theory during that period of time that, that hasn't that come true? didn't reveal itself to be the fact yeah. it's all coming out to be true dude like rewind wait, all the episodes in 2020 that we did like i would love to go back I, d- I don't know if you remember but i i called and said this and i said it won't matter because by the time it all unfolds correct yes this is everybody's not going to give a shit anymore no. right they're moving and I on. said that when we were in the thick of all this and we were talking about what's going on, and I said 100%. they don't even give a fuck because by the time it all comes comes around, no, we'll have moved past it. Everybody will have forgotten about it. We're on to the next thing. Have you seen? So that's the playbook. It's all about the news cycle. It's keep the, it going. Uh, the way that they pushed and sold uh, the vaccines, the way that people got shut down when they said, "Hey, this is experimental," which it was. They actually said that in the thing that you signed. The way that when people said, "Hey, these masks aren't." probably helping anybody. Yeah. Uh, they didn't. Uh, lockdowns, yeah. probably going to cause more problems than than solve. True. I just read a, a study right now that shows that there was a 17% increase in learning disabilities among children mm-hmm. because of that. And it's been attributed specifically to that. Yeah, no shit. And then one third of deaths yeah. were not due we're to COVID. We're seeing that too. That's yeah. a huge yeah, number. 30%. We're not talking about like a little bit. Yeah. Like how many millions of deaths were they were there in the US or how many, right? Now take a third off. Yeah. That's crazy. So yeah. you got to ask yourself, yeah, why? Why would they, why were the numbers What you got to really ask yourself is there's, there's still people I see wearing masks. I know. Yes. I like, feel bad. Dude. What is that? What is that? Who too. are you? They were hug. traumatized. Yeah. They were really traumatized, bro. It's, it's not, it's, it's, I feel bad. They haven't recovered. You're, you're yeah. a special kind of special. You do on that. Stuff, <laughs> That's no, just, don't, I know. Hey, look, I, I feel for them because, uh, I can be hypochondriac. It was a challenging time for me. And, um, you know, they're, they're traumatized, dude. I mean, you, you still see, mm. I mean, I was at the airport and I saw, Mom putting her little kids in masks and all that stuff. It's like she. They were I still to see death. it right now. I still see it. I see parents who've got little kids that are walking around wearing masks, and like I'm, I'm just so confused. Like, what else do you need to come out before you realize? Like, not only did it not work, but it was a bad idea, really bad idea. Yeah. Oh, like, I mean, children, children's development uh, was um, hampered, and. It's and I want it. This is. Sad. I think that's where I, I get most mad about kids. I don't, if you're a, a dumb adult, whatever. There's lots of dumb people yeah. and lots of people that do dumb shit, yep. and I don't care. I think I only get upset when I see the kids. So do I. Yeah. That's uh, when I see the kids. You're so because, impressionable. Exactly because because you're an idiot. You and you've now been you've convinced your children that this is what we need to do, and then now they're stuck in this place because they they look up to their parents for what they should well, or should do. And he, here's the here's why where I this is the sad part. Um, 
children who were affected negatively, which is most kids, they were isolated way more than they normally would. So can't go to school. Um, there's this air of fear that was way excessive than what was necessary, obviously. Lots of turmoil, people may be losing their jobs or what's going on, forced to wear masks. The kids can't read faces. Lots of learning and development is happening there. Um, uh, not around with the kids as much, whatever. The damage that happens to kids cannot be reversed completely. This is the sad part. It's permanent. When you have a developing brain and you do something, this is why when you have a trauma when you're a child, you yeah. still deal with it when you're a fucking adult. Right, right. that's right. You, because you through all these been therapies made. just to get back into that uh, uh, trauma to, to face it. I don't yeah. even think, I, I, that's why I think I get so irritated is because I think that people are naive to, we don't even know how this is going to impact them, say, 10 years from now. Oh. Like, we don't, you don't even know. Yeah. Like, we still, that's, and so if, you got them and you're still letting them do wear the mask and stuff like that. It's like, what the fuck, man? I know. Come on. I know. It's a, it's uh it was a weird it was a weird time. I think um a lot of people I think there's there's a few categories of people. One, it's the people who said, I told you so. Not a lot of those, because it was two years of bombardment from all angles, media, culture. Um, your job, like, so, so that it's a lot of pressure. So there's not a lot of people that were like, I'm not following along and I'm going to stay that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, but there's that category of people. Then there's the people who are like, okay, I'm going to kind of follow along. And then now we're like, wow, that was messed up. That was totally wrong. And then there's a category of people that the pain of admitting or acknowledging what they did where they yeah, either that you got bamboozled. Yeah, that they disconnected with friends and family or they did something that didn't that hurt their kid. It's so painful, you can't. Yeah. I can't acknowledge that that was all. In fact, I, it feels better for me to keep uh, you know moving forward and propagating this lie or whatever um you know with all that. It's crazy. In the media here's the good news out of it. I think more people now than ever distrust the media. Yeah. Realize that the media, um, is a loudspeaker for special interests. It really is. Oh, I just yeah. read an article. CNBC comes out with a study, a study. Okay. And they rank the worst States to live in the, like the, these are the worst States in America at the top of the list. We're like Florida, Texas. What's okay. the criteria? All the free States. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. It, so, now they now they're now in the article because here's what happens is articles get shared and people read headlines in the study you see what they put in there inclusivity like hu humidity and, and like property tax no, no. Like, weird, like, like like random weird no shit. it's more like inclusivity <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know okay, whatever the EIN or whatever uh, yeah. stuff what's crazy about the study is that the, those states were at the top the worst states to live in those were the states were mo that had the largest population increases. In other words, people were moving to them. So it's so opposite yeah. of, you know, so who's painting this picture? Who's trying to paint this picture of yeah. these terrible, you know, states to be in or whatever? It's really messed up. Yeah. yeah it's a really weird, I don't yeah. know. So <laughs> more, uh, more interesting uh, stuff that's happening around the world. Um, Bob Iger, uh, Disney's CEO, announced that they're selling off a bunch of their streaming services. <gasps> they're reducing... They're like, I think they're freezing all your um, Star, yeah, Wars, Star Wars, Marvel. Marvel. Mm -hmm. So they're, they over, that. oversaturated the market with I, that. I think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And wow. then they're, and they're selling off a bunch of their, their streaming going? services. And the rumor is that they might even sell Disney plus to Apple. <gasps> Dude, wow, that's crazy. What's wow. even crazier this is, is that it's more streaming services getting consolidated into one big company. Oh. You know, all, all I next remember saying, uh, <laughs> I wonder who said some of this shit. It won't, be, that. It won't be one. Um, yeah. It won't be one. I'm, I'm going to lose that argument too because it'll be three. You know <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Still, dude, I honestly, I think that's so necessary though. I mean, yes. Those two different um, like brands, like Marvel and Star Wars, like uh, we love them, and it's like you get excited about certain shows, but it's it was the only thing that was making them any kind of money and getting them views. Like they tanked with Willow, they tanked with yeah. Indiana Jones, they tanked uh, something else that was like supposed to be a blockbuster that they tanked. They've, they've been doing pretty poorly, huh? Yeah, and it's honestly it's alarming to me that they would make the same decisions over and over again. Yeah. Uh, and they're not receiving feedback from the actual like viewers and the audience. Like uh, it, 
to me, it's like when are companies going to kind of pivot and, and understand that like they went away from their customer base. Like there was, there's obviously a huge customer base that is like, we don't like this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I always consider Disney like a very conservative, wholesome type of brand. And it just doesn't seem to have that vibe or feel it's anymore. They've moved like more that. and more in the, you know, kind of woke type of direction. That's what's, I think that's, that's and, what, and whether true or not, that's the sentiment. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not stating that, that that's like my personal belief yeah. as much as that's the feel that that's out there. And I feel like you're, you're alienating uh, the biggest part of your following by doing that. And I mean, it's kind of like the stupid move that, you know, Bud Light, Gillette made. It's just like these, these, this move that you guys are doing when you, when you know, like you're an outsider, I'm not even in the business. I'm not even looking at the numbers. I could, it's obvious who your customer base is The why would you do something like that? So, so strange to me. It is. It's such a, I, I mean, I mean, Disney's a, I mean, they're an old company, a very successful brand. Uh, I mean, if I had to bet on them, I bet that they're going to do that. They'll do well. That they'll figure it out. Oh, they will figure it out. Yeah. That, I mean, honestly, you brought up the stock. Uh, I'll pull it up right now to see, to see even what happened. Yeah, I'm curious where it's at. I mean, I have I have quite a bit. It's uh, both Max's portfolio and my portfolio is is um, heavily in in Disney because I do believe in the brand long term. And even if I'm not a fan of what I see going on right now, I do believe that you know they'll eventually turn it around. And well, it out. I think one of the mistakes they made. Yeah, they're they're at eighty seven dollars. Well, oh, so that's down. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. It's, uh, so it's been going down for a while. A little has been. Look at that. Oh yeah, I'm looking. It was at one thirteen uh, towards the beginning of the year. It's kind of dropped. Yeah. So there was a big drop. It looks like around May. That's a happened. six month. Go to one year. Go yeah. to one year. Yeah. Look at look that. It was well, almost, I mean, a lot of companies though went, went down um, during that period, but I could see kind of the trend there. Interesting. I, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think um, with some of this. I mean, they have, I don't know. You know what I think a big mistake they did was, and I think a lot of companies are making this mistake. And I don't know if it's because they're forced into it because of the, how um, things have been, or if they thought that would be a good decision. But Disney kind of started to get into the political sphere with their opinions. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is you're a big company like Disney. Um, it means you have a lot of influence. Now you're going to be attacked by the other side and you, you could suffer whether true or not. You're putting yourself in a, in an arena that, you know, maybe you're probably better off just kind of not saying anything. I, I yeah, mean, this I'll, is I'll, the, the Gina Carano thing I think was a huge mistake. And it was literally because, um, Kathleen Kennedy didn't like that, you know, on her Twitter, she would post things in regard to her opposite stance politically. And it was just a political, um, um, issue for her that it was like, she thinks that, oh, we can't have, uh, this person work, uh, you know, on the show anymore. And, and that was the decision. And then Pete, there was massive pushback and backlash because of that. And then it just kept going in that direction. Yeah. yeah. This is like, a, like why a, I, I double think, down. I think that and it's actually funny. It's totally not related to his athletic abilities, but I actually think it's one of the reasons why Michael Jordan's so revered because yeah. it was one of the most brilliant things he ever did he was completely that. avoid that conversation. Yep. Unlike somebody like LeBron who is thick in all of it. And I just think that, and sure, there's maybe some people that love LeBron more because of that, but he's equally hated because of that too, I think. And I think it does divide your fans and it, cho it forces them to look at you more than just this professional athlete and what you're great at. And, oh, you also have these political beliefs, which is, I think, a smart strategy that I think Jordan always did. And I think was kind of the norm back in the days where now yeah, there's this movement of you like know, everybody si wants to silence know. is violence. And yeah, if you have a platform, you have to use it. And it's like... You know, you, this 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 push of just because you have a large following that you should put an opinion forth on these subjects that most of these people are not educated on. It's yeah. like such a... We don't need any more uneducated opinions. Well, that's part of it. I think the other part of it is you're forced to because like uh, Gina Carano puts out a tweet. They might have got heat saying, hey, what are you guys going to say about one of your actors? So mm -hmm. now you're kind of forced into that position. And then the second thing is everything's politicized now. Everything wasn't before. Everything is now. Oh, fact, I don't. I don't agree so, that you're forced. I think you make that decision. You feel. It yeah. Feels I mean, let's right. be. Let, we people could say so. There, we went through all the same stuff. 
and everybody wanted us to make this big stance. And I mean, we collectively all talked to them, like, listen, like, mm-hmm. we don't know yet. We don't yeah. have enough information. We're not educated enough on exactly. it yet. Like, we can have all our own opinions we want, but until we see, and there's still some people that like hated on that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, yeah, I can't believe you didn't say I'm this. I'm not going to react. I have to understand like all of the details, the facts. Yeah, but first, can be being guys, intelligent. But you guys need to understand something too. This other part of it, which is literally everything's been politicized, okay? I could tell you three car brands and I bet you would associate it with a particular political party. Or I could tell you a diet. Yeah, yeah. I could say, oh, I eat a lot of meat or I'm a vegan immediately you're like, well, you probably vote this way. You probably have these beliefs. Yeah. Uh, it's because everything's become politicized. And so it's like, you're, it, everybody's being forced into this, like you're here, you're there type of deal. Yeah. It's very strange. Box, yeah. Never before. Do you guys remember driving a car and someone being like, oh, I know. No, I mean, that, like, all of that, crazy. all of that is just <laughs> the, the power and the brilliance of the media to be able to do that. I mean, the, the, that is the best strategy is to divide and conquer. And if you can turn every single thing that you do as a consumer into a political choice and try and pigeonhole people into that, but it's our responsibility to not allow that. Yeah. You know, it's our responsibility to when someone says, oh, you you, you, you have a flag in front of your house, you must be a conservative. Yeah. Like, what, because I love my country, I automatically vote Republican? I like, know. no, that's not what that means. You know, like, you have to be able to defend yourself in that situation and not allow idiots to put you in that box. Like, people have been trying to put each other in a box for, for forever. J- Justin and I were just talking yeah. about this uh, in the bathroom. I don't know. Anyway, but we were in there. <laughs> yes. you know? We have our best conversations, yeah. by the way. Yeah, that's we, great. Yeah, yeah, holding hands. Do our business. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> under the stall. But no, yeah. we're sitting there, and um, I was I was reading these news articles. And I'm like, it feels like they don't even try. Like they used to try when they would lie to us. It was smarter. It was kind of like <laughs> yeah. you kind of had to be like, huh? I could kind of mm. see. Now it's almost like the sun's purple. You're like, what? Yeah. No, it's not. What are you talking? About? It's totally opposite. Yep. But I wonder if it's just either they think they're they're starting to realize either that people are just gonna run with it. Or what? Like, why is it hundred percent? What they've realized is that nobody that they're just going to listen. The bulk are idiots, and the and the free thinkers, even being sly, we're going to think for themselves and challenge it. So why waste our time trying to be sly? Let's just be blunt. We're going to catch the sixty percent dummies, and the same forty percent that are free thinkers, and that we're going to challenge it. Doesn't matter how creative we write it, they were going to challenge, dig into it, think about it. It's like. So why waste our time trying to be sly when we're going to convince the, the the sixty percent that we know we're going to convince no matter how we write it? It's weird. That's what it is. Yeah. It's I like know. they're gonna the, the idiots are gonna fall for it no matter what. So it's like let's just be direct. Let's just get more of it out direct and like <laughs> let's not waste our time being creative. Now, at what point? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys do you think at some point? I, I hope this happens. At some point, do you think that most people are going to be like, wait a minute, this is all bullshit. Like, what is going on here? I think we're all... I don't know, man. If they haven't come to that conclusion now, I'm I'm worried. I'm worried for them. When was the last time you looked at, uh, you know, what what are the trends right now with these, you know, news networks? Like, let's say, you know, MSNBC or the uh, Fox News or CNN. Like, are they... Are they maintaining their viewership? Are they continuing to see a decline? What do you see? We should like, look that up. I'm pretty sure they're tanking. Like, I would think so bad. too. Well, I know Fox. They're bleeding like crazy. I know well, Fox had a new lineup, and I just saw an article that well, they're ready Jesus. To I down. mean, they lost Tucker, right? So yeah, that yeah. had been one of the. Uh, I mean, you're talking yeah. about one of the most viewed. Man, he's humans. on fire right now, oh. interviewing everybody. Tell he's, me he's that Andrew crazy. Tate interview was not one of the best yeah. conversations you ever. You know, through. I I was never uh, I never watched uh, too much of Tucker Carlson mm-hmm. before. I would see clips here and there. Um, I watched him interview um, Andrew Tate, and then I watched yeah. him. I always interview, thought he was pretty measured. I watched a few. So yeah. then I watched him interview um, the Republican uh, like Vivek. presidential candidates. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's what I hate about the media: whenever they interview a political candidate, they they like play like like uh, like softball, like hey, you uh, know, yeah. like, and they here. don't really go with the hard shit. Or like, they play softball. I, I know you have they play softball points, and who they go. like, and then who they don't like, they're throwing. Yeah, and, over. and so then the candidate doesn't go and go to this guy because he knows they're gonna ask me the hard questions. I'll go, you know, like what's your favorite ice cream or stupid shit like that. My name is Joe Biden. I love ice cream. He was hard on on these on some of these candidates. He yes. eviscerated Mike Pence. Did oh, you see that? Man, oh, yeah, bro. And he didn't oh. let up on it. Yeah, he that, kept going. I'm like, finally, I want to see Mike Pence gives the most political suicide. Terrible, bro. Oh, yeah, terrible yeah, answer. Dude. Yeah. Terrible. And then uh, what's his name? Vivek. That guy's winning me over. Yeah, 
I, I, I thought the he's doing he was he's fire. He was doing really well. I thought the Andrew Tate interview was the best interview. I think it's uh, that was go, a really. Good, I think it should be one of the best interviews this year that on Joe Rogan on anybody. I think it was one of the most the most completely paints a different picture of the guy like. Like in terms of like any understanding, if you hear his name, like people already have opinions and that's all been sort of programmed. But then if you listen to the guy and hear his thoughts all the way through, it's pretty interesting. The contrast of what you're receiving about him versus like you know, what actually happened. What's weird is how he's become like this, uh, this figure that people fight over. And there's so much contradictory information that keeps being put out over this one person. It's really weird. It must be because he has so much influence. Yeah. And especially the, maybe the people he's influencing, it's young men. The young, the 20 year old kind of men uh, crowd. Right? Yeah. And, and because I mean, it's like you, you don't read anything that's in the middle about him. It's either like really bad or like he's the most awesome thing in the world. Yeah. No, I mean, I think the, the reason why I like that so much too, because I remember when we, we first came across this stuff and we had a back and forth debate about him and stuff. And I think that. Most of the interviews that I've seen the guy in, because uh, he's not afraid to go to have interviews with people who completely disagree with him, he's playing defense like ninety percent of the time. Like most people are out to, yeah. unless it's like Just a, get clips to make him look horrible. Yeah, and chow, and he and he would come off a little bit abrasive, which I knew that was one of the things that you didn't like. Is like you'd be like, ah, I don't necessarily disagree with his saying, but I don't like the way he says it. Yeah. You know, and my argument back to that was like, well, fuck, the guy is in a, in a fight every time he gets in a conversation because nobody is like asking him like intelligently thought questions where he can articulate his point. They're cutting him off. They're challenging him. Even, you know, people that may even agree with him were interviewing that way. Where that conversation with Tucker, I felt let him articulate his point. And Tucker did not not, didn't throw softballs. Like no. he asked very hard questions. Well, then why do people say this about yeah. you? And they made him explain everything. I've never seen him so calm in an interview and never see his, uh, I've never seen him be able to get out a full so, train of thought. So big picture, right? Big picture. So I was thinking about this because we watched the interview the other night, all of us. And, um, you know, I have mixed feelings about Andrew Tate from what I've seen. Uh, but big picture, there, there's a um, a huge market demand for young men to have uh, like somebody to look up to that essentially tells them like the shit that you you know that you're supposed to be told when you're a young yeah. man was like go get a, go to work work out yeah. you know get a job be responsible like how to take care of yourself and others yeah you know, if you want to be healthy if you want to be attractive you need to be confident you need to be you know show that you have some value like yeah because it's not just him like earn your wealth it's not just him like jordan peterson very different but he also kind of attracts you know like there's a vacuum like of young like young men don't have mm -hmm. that and the message isn't like isn't necessarily like be lazy and whatever it's like it's not easy stuff if you do what he says he's like get, you know if you get through the bravado and all that other shit that he does what's he telling you to do like get off your ass go work hard yeah be independent self-sufficient yeah. yeah. and know. young men are like yeah like, right. Whoa! Nobody told you that before. I mean, I think that's, that's why we see. We talked about this the other day on the podcast, and I said the There's jury's still there. out on how I feel about some of these things that that people are monetizing. And it, again, it's not me uh, bashing on them because I said the jury's still out. I'm not sure how I feel, but there's a lot of these, you know, influencers or people that have large followings that are building these brands around, uh, you know, these 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 weekend camps or week long you know, boot camps where it's like, and, and really it's like, just, they're hammering the shit out of these young boys and very, very militant too about their approach. It's just, but, and they want but it, they want it, you know? So you see there is, there's, there's this obvious need. It totally reminds me of the OCR movement that we talked about years yeah. ago. Remember when we speculated on what, how funny it is that if you'd go back a hundred years, if you were from a hundred years ago and you got a time machine and you saw that people sign up and pay to get beat up and run through these courses, yeah. you would be baffled by that. But it's because we need it. It's in our human nature to desire that challenge, that hard. And because we are all soft, we're working around these desk jobs. It reminds me the same thing. You go like, wait a second, these young boys are signing up to get yelled at and kind of belittled and camped yeah. and water sprayed well, in their face. All they're hearing is the about morning. toxic masculinity. All they're hearing about is like, if I'm too energetic or I want to move, like I have to be on medication, uh, you know, I have to sit still, I have to like, you know, memorize things and conform and comply. It's like, you know, of course there's going to be this like, ah, like rebellion to that. Yeah. yeah. I just think they're thirsty for like a, a male role model. Yeah. You know, that like calls to them, it says to them, like, 
make you can you know do something with yourself. There is a better version. Well, of and that also and it en- takes hard work, and that also encourages things like stoicism, man. Where it's okay to, as a man to cry or be sad or have down times, but you still get the fuck you up and go to work. Do the work. You still get up and you do things. That's you got to be still- a good man. You have to keep at it. You can't just like fall to pieces. No, you have to. That's how the world works. And I just don't think we've been saying that for a no, long. I think we've been wants you to fall to pieces, t- telling man. everybody to be, it's okay. It's be emotional, be sensitive, cry. It's okay. And I think we're leaning so hard into that, that we're, we're messaging to men the same way that we message a lot of things to women. Remember when we talked to Adam attachment Smith. Adam yeah, yeah. and he was talking about yeah. how men want we're, respect. We're even going after therapy the wrong way with men. We're thinking that like that, that like men don't want that. Like men need a challenge. They don't, mm. they don't need to sit and hear their feelings all day and express themselves. Like that's not what is going to help them. What's going to help them is to give them the, show them the problem, show them how to solve it. And then go get their ass to work and make them go accomplish it. And then that it's, right there is going to empower them and make them a better. Yeah. Man. So someone listening right now might, might be confused over what you're saying. So I'll give it a little bit of an analogy. It's like, it's not telling a young man, have no fear. Okay. That is not how it works. You're going to be afraid. Yep. You and, and you need to feel that. You can't just disconnect and become it. a robot because that'll make you a terrible father or make you a terrible person, a terrible friend. You'll end up medicating yourself with alcohol or God knows what. So it's not about having no fear. It's about being brave. Yep, having in, courage. In order to be brave, you have to feel the fear. Yeah. That's the difference. So it's not telling men uh, or or boys, hey, you know, feelings are bad. Yeah, Don't ignore feel feelings. your feelings. You can't be it's sad. It's like, hey, be in touch with your feelings. You got to feel these things. They tell you a lot about what's going on. They give you signals. You're mad for a reason. You're sad for a reason. You're right. frustrated for a reason. Oh, oh, it's 7 a.m. You got to get up and go to work still. You still got to go do that thing. You still got to go to the gym. Yeah. You still got to take care of your family. That's that's the message. And wow. I think it's like it was too extreme in one way, right. and then it went too extreme in the other way, you know? Yeah. And I know young men listening right now are probably getting jazzed by hearing this because nobody says that. Well, I think that's you why know? I think that's why there was so much appeal to somebody like Andrew Tate is because I think he was unapologetic about that messaging and and he's like anybody else that's on social media is like he knows what gets clicks and so he leaned into that he leaned into the extreme version yeah. of that which backfired on him right it also got him a lot of negative it also got someone like you who i think probably agrees with a lot of his messaging to get clipped out and shared to you and then you're like oh, i don't like this guy i'll tell you i'll tell you my listen from what i've heard his words not clips that are taken out of context and i haven't seen all of his stuff okay but his words like i can hear what he's saying and I could say, okay, I see his point. I get where he's coming from. Okay, that's true. But if I met him in person, his bravado, the way he presents himself, the way he talks, I just wouldn't like him. Oh, it just I just comes across. I as disagree someone with that. You think I would? Oh, like him? I maybe you. But oh, I, yeah, I'm well, like yeah. secure enough in a situation like that where I. I don't think a- it's insecure thing. I just it just would come across to me as like. Um, I don't know. I think someone who puts themselves out in that way, like, why are you? Why are you? I wonder if he would present himself like that around. I don't even think that it would. He would have that bravado. I think he's maybe doing it's a that media thing. in contrast to somebody challenging yeah. him. That's right. He does not yeah, strike but, me but, as the guy who's insecure about what a badass he is. That he would need to flex on someone like us if he came in the room. Well, he knows yeah, how financially yeah. successful. He knows what a badass yeah, he, he is talks physically. About all the time. He's always talking Bro, about how much money he has. Again, that's that's leaning into right. the social media thing. That's why I just I just explained. Well, that's like, what I mean. I, we're judging. It's like off wait, here's the thing. Like uh, part of why we suck at social media is because we don't lean into those things. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've got the toys. We've got the success. We're very masculine. We have all, we have a lot of those traits also, but we don't lean into it because it's just not our style to do things like that. It, it, to our to our fault. Right. If we wanted to be better at social media, we would we would exploit those as things. A, as a media personality, I get it. I'm just saying in real life, if you sat down with someone and yeah. within the first five minutes he talks about his Bugatti and his private jet, yeah, and all the yeah, girls yeah. I did that, I, I you're gonna be like, bro, yeah, see, I, that's that why I think you're off on this. I don't like, think he if would, you, though. the way I look at somebody like that, right, and and then what I've realized is if somebody aligns with me, values morally. Uh, spiritually, if we have a lot of those things in common, rarely ever do I meet them and not like them, regardless if they have a flamboyant personality or they're quiet and shy. If morally we align on a lot of things, nine times out of 10, when we meet, we end up yeah, liking each other. same here. I don't mean flam. You can be loud. You can be quiet. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you're sitting down in front of me and in the first five minutes, you're telling me about, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the cars you drive, how much money you, you really make, think that how would strong happen? You are well, no, 
This is the media side. I don't know him in person. Yeah, I know. So I'm I, judging it. I, we're, we're we're all speculating right now, right? Totally. Do, I totally. I just I I really disagree that he, he, we would invite him in. He would walk in this door and he'd be like, "Yo, you see my Bugatti yeah, outside?" Like well. I just I don't that does, <laughs> that would be annoying. I, well, yeah, that would annoy me too. Know. But and that would also be a sign of a very insecure man. Yeah. He does not strike me as a very insecure yeah. man. And that would be obvious. Like men that have to do that, right? Or in, in, any sex for this anybody. matter. Anybody that has to lead with that and this is by the way coming from somebody who was very insecure about these things matter of fact this was something that i had to work on for a very long part of my life and my journey of success was when i first started to get that i felt the need to have to, to say people. that stuff because i felt so insecure from where i came from and, sure. I, and i and i'd be in a room of highly educated successful intelligent people and i too had all this like financial success and so i needed to talk about all my accolades because i was insecure you about to, that like, prove it right yeah, yeah. that is that i've long i'm long beyond i'm beyond that now in my life I, I just don't get that from that person just because that's what they talk about. I mean, it's social. hard. We're, yeah. we're, we're judging, uh, you know, somebody off their videos yeah. and, you know, all the media. I mean, who knows? I mean, how many times have we met someone in person and it's way different yeah. than the persona? So that many times. Yeah. yeah. Almost every time. Yeah, most I, times. Uh, yeah. I, had to, I have to bring this. I have an update on um, Arlo. And I just oh. wanted to kind of, ever since like that story I told you guys about <laughs> him kind of going off trail, finding this poo and then like eating it, getting real sick, tripping out. Dude, yeah, like, yeah. He was you a thought hot he, mess. You, you, you thought he might have eaten Literally some, thought like, psilocybin growing in the poo or something. So yeah. I have a theory. What okay. Happened? So he's been like probably the most difficult dog I think I've ever had. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, hands down. Yeah. Uh, Lo super like lover dog like he's like very lovable and everything but like just a huge pain in my ass um and uh i love the stories from dude so as of the last few weeks since i even told you guys that story i mean he's just been like calm docile he he listens to commands like i've been taking him out he comes back he doesn't like just take off like he's done that to me a few times uh <laughs> and he just comes up and he's just like <laughs> Totally chill lover. And I'm just like, he actually, I think he therapy. saw, I think he saw Mother Aya. <laughs> <laughs> I think he finally saw the way. <laughs> it's and it was just like, you know, like maybe, maybe some neural connections happened in there. And he's just it like, he got it. You know, it's like, this is how I have to behave. I don't know. I'm, I'm like holding on to that. Like, hope it's now he's all good. Yeah. <laughs> how old is he though, right now? Yeah, I know. There's that. Yeah. So he's, uh, what? Four. I think he's five. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So he's he's getting an older. That's about side. right. Like when they start breaking out of their te teenage years, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, when is adult. that? Is but that he's still that? the yeah, energy yeah. is the same as a well, puppy. Yeah, it's he's crazy. Well, I mean, he's still a Weimaraner. I yeah. mean, at the end of the day, those dogs have got a lot of energy. Like my buddy, who was an ultra marathon runner, loved that dog because the dog would run hundreds of miles with him. You know, what I'm saying that's yeah. what's cool about a dog like that. But I don't think he's ever. It'll take a long time for him to calm energy down. But I bet the it's you know he's he's moving out of being a teenage boy and now he's more of a, a mature. Sure, that's like the logical explanation. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's holding on to Mother. We're going with your ayahuasca trip. I think that's it. I'm just saying. Hey, uh, something uh, happened immediately after that. Speaking yeah. of that stuff, another study because you got you know I've talked about how I'm going to try doing this ketamine therapy thing. Oh, and, did uh, you sign up for that? Yet? Well, I signed I, I signed up for it. It hasn't happened yet. I'll keep I'll give you guys all. Okay, you know, okay. Kind of like you haven't done the other one since then, or have you? No, um, not specifically, okay. but uh, I think okay. I'm going to go tonight, and then I think I might. Oh, you are? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So so check out, this is another study that came out on ketamine. So ketamine is FDA approved for the treatment of anxiety and depression um, and things like PTSD. Well, they did a study. This is the British Journal of Psychiatry. Okay, so researchers from the University of, no of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia, found, okay, this is crazy, that more than one in five participants achieved total remission from their symptoms of depression wow. after a month, after a month wow. of biweekly injections. A third of them had their symptoms approved by 50%. Now keep in mind, these are treatment, this is treatment resistant d depression that they, that they did in the study. Meaning They've these are done people, other treatments previous to this. One of the hardest things to treat is this is treatment resistant depression. That means if you've tried SSRIs, you've yeah. tried other yeah. combinations of drugs, you've done talk therapy, you've done, and it just doesn't get better. One month. How interesting. One third, 50% better. And one fifth were cured. That's a weird thing to say about, That's pretty powerful. about depression. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. So there's something there that is uh, quite potentially like a, a breakthrough in medicine. That's going to be like equivalent to like, 
antibiotics where wow. it just changes the whole landscape of everything. Yeah, I can't wait to hear uh, your experience and to compare it to all the other stuff, right? Because I feel like there's yeah. a, a there's a lot of similarities in the, the, the research that we're hearing around like the MDMA, the ketamine, the psilocybin, like they all seem to have these profound, you know, benefits uh, to therapy. So it'd be interesting well, along those your- lines, um, b- because I believe uh, very strongly, this is true in almost every case, something that is that powerful also has uh, lots of potential negative of power cool. too. I read a, a Substack. So you guys familiar with Substack where people write, okay, mm-hmm. so a doctor, this was a doctor who wrote about his experience with psilocybin. Did you see this? I think I might have, yeah. So he wrote in there, you know, he suffered from kind of mild, moderate depression for a while. And, you know, he had been on treatment had read all the studies. He's a doctor, so he took all the precautions. He had microdosed with it, leading up to larger doses to test his tolerance. Everything seemed okay. Set himself up with uh, some friends. Uh, I think one of them was medically trained in this great environment. Like, he knew the studies. He knew what he was doing. It wasn't some kid going out to party and eat some mushrooms, okay? He ate a uh, less than what they would call a heroic dose. I don't know what the dose, but he ate like a substantial dose, one that you would eat if you were going to, you know, get treatment or whatever, took the dose. Full psychedelic dose. Yeah, I think, I don't remember what it was. I don't even think it was three grams, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what the doses are. I think that's what I read. But anyway, he took it and he had this great experience. And he felt amazing. He started texting family members, doing all this stuff. And then the following days, he started noticing interesting connections in life. Like, oh, wow, like, this this happened for that reason, and that happened right. for that reason. But then it was this song is giving me this message. Get obsessed that I need over to do this. numbers and things. And right? then, oh my God, I just saw this food label, and I read this thing, and that's telling me this. He didn't realize it. His friends started seeing this happen to him. They contacted his therapist. They're like, something's not right. He went into a full manic episode for three months, like oh, went wow. crazy wow. for three months, and now is starting to. So he wrote and just yeah. just now starting to recover. So he writes about it and he says, listen, like the potential for, for danger. He's, he's never been manic before either. Yeah. He triggered a manic episode in him. I mean, I could see that because of yeah. how powerful and profound some of these things that we're reading about. Uh, I could uh, just imagine someone who is stuck in this place for so long, maybe years, maybe decades of their life. And all of a sudden they do this you know, psilocybin trip one time or ayahuasca trip one time. And all of a sudden they make all these crazy connections. Then all of a sudden you start thinking everything yeah. is connected like that. And there's probably some truth to there's that. There's gotta be some, but gen- then you like overthink that, you May, know, I, you know, I think there's gotta be some genetic, uh, yeah, proclivity some or something. Sure. Genetic. Sure. Yeah. So, something there. Like uh, that, that was going to be my thought was like, maybe they can look back in your, your, you know, ancestor, you know, genealogy, whatever. And like find out h- how, uh, if there's any like potential for psychosis or any kind of like uh, issue like that, that may be something that could be triggered. Well, I, I think those this, to that point too, that, you know, people that get addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, any other drug are just as susceptible to getting addicted to that also too. Hmm. I mean, we, I think we've seen uh, plenty of examples of this in our space. When we first started doing this podcast and we were traveling around and meeting all kinds of new people and, you know, there, it, the beginning of this uh, podcast, there was a lot of like uh, a lot of ayahuasca, a lot of psilocybin, a lot of DMT yeah. trips that were happening in the health and wellness space, justifying it as this, you know, way to be better and more connected and, and, and whatever and pitching it as this like improving oneself and being healthier. Yet they're chasing this like every fucking weekend. And it's just like, okay, at one point, do you, or at what point do Where's you use the work? Yeah. Well, yeah. And what point direction. do you start to admit to yourself that, okay, I'm getting high. You're every, just trying to get high. Yeah. You're trying to get high and have fun. And it's, and you justify it because it has these positive benefits to it. It's like, well, I get high and smoke weed and I laugh and have a good time watching movies. And then what point do I justify that I'm doing this all the time for that? And it's no different. You know, have so, you guys, have you guys ever known somebody that's gone into like a full that's a scary not state. Manic. manic no i had a cl- i had yeah. i had a client who oh really yeah dude Yikes. it was that'd be scary oh yeah. oh it's be around it even it's the it's you're literally crazy like yeah. you literally believe like th- this person believed he was i'm not gonna say too much just in case they listen and i don't want to you know make them feel like i'm mm-hmm. talking about them whatever but this person literally went manic and believed that they, that they were this famous 
person that passed away years ago. This oh, musician wow. thought that's what they were. Wow. They had to, they took him to, and I, he talked to me after he came out of it. They took, they, they had to hospitalize him. And he, he's, I said, what was that experience like? Cause he's like telling me now at this point. Right. And he goes, I thought everybody in the hospital was in on it. I thought my family was in on it. I wow. thought that everybody wanted to keep me, wanted me to be fooled and not know that I was this person who's from the past, this famous person. I'm like, you fully believed it. He goes, Oh, I was, wow. he's like, you couldn't convince me otherwise. I'm like, holy what shit, a that's trip. a scary place yeah, to be, really dude. Scary. That is so wild. Uh, yeah, I knew. So one of my uh, friends growing up was uh, the same age as my, my cousin that lived with us. She was like four years older than me. And he'd come around all the time. was like a drummer, cool guy. Um, and I found out later, like he used to do Frisbee golf and all that. And uh, I, I run into him every now and then played in this like pretty famous punk band. And um, he got into DMT. And he smoked a little bit too much DMT and he literally like went crazy and like is walking the streets and fully homeless now, like after like, wow. like overdosing on DMT. Wow. So I was like, I didn't think of like a psychedelic drug having that effect, Yeah, you know? And so that was a little cautionary tale for yeah. me. So, so ketamine is not uh, a psychedelic in that sense. And I think that's why it's probably the, it's the only one that's uh, used FDA for therapy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it doesn't safer. I think so. Yeah. I think they're seeing in the studies that there's less of these potential, you know, effects. Or so it'll be interesting then because if I go crazy, yeah. Afterwards. Well, no, no, because you because <laughs> that it's, suck because it's that safer. Is it less maybe potentially as power? Is maybe it's not as powerful as the ayahuasca? Well, I don't know, man. I'm reading these so studies. And they're, well, uh, yeah, they're crazy. No. I mean, a lot of them seem to point in the same direction. So it's interesting to me. Yeah, you know, you have to wonder too, like you know, because of what a lot of that does is like open these pathways or open these doors, like how, uh, how many doors are closed off or pathways closed off in your brain as a protective mechanism because a hundred percent. Right. And so you open a door that was supposed to stay closed. You're because, right. Because your brain already taught it. Like, Bro, like that's supposed to stay shut. There is a, you need the equipment to be able to deal with it. There's right? a reason why you don't remember this path, thing of your past. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're going to remember it and then go home. Like, you know, five hours later, you're supposed to be cool. I mean, could, I could see, imagine yeah. like, so I, told you guys before there's a lot of like dark like i don't my meaning like i don't remember yeah. of like my childhood and uh, so much of that i think i've processed worked through and like in fact i come from a place now that i'm very grateful for everything yeah. that has happened mm -hmm. but i can't imagine doing therapy like that and then it opens this thing where like i didn't even know i was like molested for six years oh, or some oh, shit terrible you know what i'm saying like something like yeah. that like all of a sudden now it's i so horrific yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> i'm like i thought i was so over all my shit like and then it opens mind. that door like i could just imagine like you know that's happened to people i bet has, has I, it happened where like too if you delete a memory like that but it's still kind of lives in your body it you does feel it right? it does it does yeah, and that. just to make things even more paranoid everybody <laughs> you can actually have false memories you could somebody could lead you oh, right and yeah. you could start to create like wait a minute maybe that did happen yeah, but that and did then happen no no yeah. oh. that's why eyewitness testimonies are not really that solid now that we've freaked everybody yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> we went to a <laughs> negative spiral there yeah. the hey end, you know what is the safest thing that's been shown to help make you feel better what getting fit yeah, uh, yeah. you ain't go. gonna open up some way weird to, doors. Way to wrap Sunlight, it all sleep, up for us. Fit. That's yeah, it. Go easy, work out. easy, and you're not gonna open up weird trauma. Go live yeah, some nutrition. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do we have a shout out for today? Oh, I, I have something. I have something for you guys. Okay, uh, actually, uh, yeah. This is a. Uh, <laughs> the irony though is like this didn't uh, didn't do as well as I wanted it to do for me. So there is a an audio book for children called uh, "The Rabbit Who Wants to Fall Asleep." And my cousin, uh, Stephanie, she used this like on all our kids. And she goes, it's the most brilliant thing ever. And uh, I tried it on Max. I'll save the story for the next time we, we get in here uh, about like everything that happened when we did, when him and I did this. But the, the story is uh, a, a meditation for children. So he's telling a story about a rabbit who want, who needs to fall asleep. And his voice is, is very meditative. Oh. And he's, and it's like, it like, like I'm listening to it. I'm like falling asleep. And she's like, I would put that on for my kids and they would never get to the end of the story. And it's designed to like kind of pull right. them in and also be very meditative for them. And then they fall asleep to the story. And I was like, Oh, that's oh. a pretty cool little hack. That so, happens to me when I listen to the Huberman podcast. <laughs> Cubes. Look, it's not what you eat. It's what you can break down, digest, and assimilate. Check this out. There's a company we work with that makes a product. It's Masszymes. These are digestive enzymes for fitness-oriented people. And this month only, you can get a free bottle of their 100% plant-based, naturally-derived 
uh, digestive enzymes. So help you break down your proteins, your fats, carbohydrates, help you with digestion, help you assimilate all those proteins for gains and recovery. And again, it's a free bottle. Go check them out. Go check them out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump free. And that's how you get the hookup. By the way, coupon code is mind pump 10 for purchases. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Josh Shannonator. What are some sled drive alternatives? Could I pull a tire on a beach using a harness? Any, uh, anything. Yeah. anything drag, that drag, a resistance. drag a kettlebell in the yeah. sand. Let's Put your car in neutral and push it. That's mm-hmm. that's another one. Make sure you know you're not going well, yeah, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> have a driver. There's some safety should, uh, yeah. things I should mention yeah. there, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you sure could. You I used to do this with uh, with clients too. Depending on the surface that you're working on, you could uh, put towel on the floor and push the towel, so you have some resistance dragging something or pushing something. It could be anything that provides resistance that you have to push or pull mm-hmm. is essentially a sled. The difference with a sled is it's made for that reason. So it's more convenient and it's not going to break or, you know, ruin your floor or whatever, but it could be any, you could pull a wagon, you know, you could get like one of those radio flyer wagons. You could throw, just load it up, load it up and pull it. Um, I mean, anything that gives you You resistance. You a rickshaw. Yeah. (laughs) Just go to town with a rickshaw. Hey, the, you guys try to get you to come to work. We have one here if you guys don't know. <laughs> we just, we just, yeah. It's the most carbon neutral. So that's right. Is. That's what, pull around a, a rickshaw. The planet. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the benefits of, of pushing and pulling things are it's low skill in the sense that the risk of injury is low in comparison to other extras. Not zero, but in comparison to other movements. Um, there's no, uh, negative portion of the rep, right? There's no eccentric. It's all concentric, right? You're pushing, but you don't have to like when you squat, you have to also lower the weight and squat it up. But this is just pushing. And the eccentric is where you get a lot of the damage and the soreness. Um, it's also, we get a lot of muscle growth, but it limits you in terms of recovery. So pushing things or pulling things, you can do it often. And the other benefit, and this is one that I think is, uh, often understated is, I mean, how many, lower body exercises do you know that encourage like full extension all the way down to your toes? Right. So it's not just your hips and knees. It's also your ankle and you're strengthening your foot and, and, and not in isolation, but rather all connected together. So it teaches everything how to really work and move well together. That's why it's so functional. Yeah. Low damage, low impact. It's one of the, the best ways to really build up volume to build muscle. So it's an awesome tool. Next question is from Connor Amrine. What is the ideal amount of sleep for building muscle? Everything says seven to nine hours, but how big of a difference would nine hours of sleep versus seven make? Uh, it's going to be an individual uh, thing here. It, not only is it individual, it's also dependent on what's happening in your life. Yeah. It's yeah. also dependent on the quality. Yeah. What kind of sleep is it? That's it. Like yeah. I've been in bed for nine hours before and felt dead tired waking up and I had, and I've also had six hours, but it was like, I had quality six hours and it felt a lot better. So it's, it's, it's a lot more than just the time, um, you know, that you're in in bed. It's like the kind of sleep that is quality. I guess the only way to know is to, to, to try one to the other and see how you feel. Yeah. Um, I, I really feel that putting too much emphasis on the, the, the total time is, is a, is a waste of time to do that. No pun intended. Just because there is such an individual variance on on exactly how much is optimal for you. And I think more energy and effort should be into consistently trying to improve how you prepare for bed. Mm-hmm. I think there's so much room for improvement on everybody in that yeah. department, including myself, Definitely. of being consistent about when do I stop drinking water? When was my last meal? How soon do I get the lights turned off? When do I actually get into bed by that time? Like, do I decompress and either do some sort of a gratitude thing or read instead of like thinking about stressful breath things work, like work, yeah. breath work? Like, there are so many practices that you can start to put into your routine to get better quality sleep, regardless if it's six hours or nine hours that you should probably be working towards that. I would put more of my energy into that than going like, Oh, check. I got eight hours today, you know, Oh, another win. It's like, but yet you went to bed three hours later than normal, or you just happen to be super exhausted because you got terrible sleep the week before. And that's the only reason why you slept that long. So instead of focusing so much on the, length of the sleep, I would put effort into 
better quality sleep by how I prepare for sleep uh, on all those things that I listed. It's one of those things where too little or too much is not good. Uh, if you're sleeping a lot, there's probably an underlying like health issue. Depression. If maybe, you yeah. can't sleep, there's probably, again, an underlying issue. I remember for one of the big ones for me that I just, I mean, relatively recently figured out, besides the sleep routine before going to bed, was how much being exposed to the sun in the day, oh, early yeah. in the day, has Huge difference. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I'm up at 8 a.m. If I get sunlight at 8 a.m., that impacts my sleep when I go to bed at 10 p.m. You would never think because they're totally. so far away from each other, but they have huge impacts. This, this is, uh, I love for someone to to test this out because this is this was such a big one for me too. It's like, um, you know, the house that I'm at now too has like this nice like backyard where I can lay out and where the sun hits like early in the morning. Like if I just go sit out in this little chair where the sun's hitting and I'm kind of like having my cup of coffee for the first half hour or so of the day of just that sun beating down on me, that night, I don't give a shit what I do that day. That night, I always get almost the best sleep ever. Yeah. Just from that one little yep. thing. Ignore all the other crazy tips that I said. And like, just, I think that makes such a big difference. And I don't know if that's, again, the individual me who, you know, is under fluorescent lights all day long is is used is sometimes no, doesn't No, get studies back to 100%. Yeah. Right. So I, I just. I know it's the same thing. I mean, for me individually, I have to cut off eating at seven o'clock. Like I can't eat past that or it's going to completely interrupt and destroy like my yeah. my REM sleep, like the, the deep sleep. I could probably make it through, but it's like I'll still wake up, uh, you know, feeling tired. And you, you know what's interesting about this? Do you remember as kids when, do you remember this, like, this was a common comment, right? Where you're like, oh man, uh, what is it about going swimming that makes me sleep so good at night? Remember you go to your friend's house, they have yeah, a pool yeah. and everybody would go to bed like early that yeah, night. And yeah, yeah. I thought it was the swimming. Yeah. It yeah, wasn't like exhausted. It was, no. we were outside yeah. in the sun all day long. Sun, and I, I, I have with my little ones, like, if you have little kids with trouble sleeping, you get him out in the sun all day. You a huge difference in Max by getting him outside and giving him a half hour to hour play early on, first thing in the day, makes a tremendous yep. difference on his nap time or his bedtime and how easily he goes down and how hard and consistent yep. he sleeps. Now, huge difference. Part of the question is like, uh, you know, how much of a muscle building difference or what? Okay, so bad sleep or yeah, let's say poor sleep versus good sleep, profound difference. In everything, not just your ability to build muscle, burn body fat, it'll affect your cravings, your mood, your psyche, your hormones, your inflammation, your immune system. It's profound to the point where uh, sleep deprivation will kill you. Uh, that's how imperative it is. It's like It's like oxygen, like you absolutely need it. So it's one of those things that's very important. And if you just go to bed and knock yourself out with I don't know, a substance or you just hit the pillow and close your eyes immediately because you're so exhausted, um, you, know, you know, or you need all these stimulants during the day to keep yourself awake. Like I would examine this because this, this could have huge effects. I'm, I'm going to make the case that it's, uh, it's not as profound, obviously, if you're like, I think someone getting bad sleep is like you're, you're going negative, right? And then somebody who gets okay sleep is just neutral. And then somebody who gets great sleep is positive and it has its compounding effects. Yeah. Like if you continue to string good quality sleep days in like, yeah, you're not going to all of a sudden uh, that week put 10 pounds of muscle on, but you string that together for weeks, months, and years of doing that. It, the, the carryover is into your life, your energy, your libido, your ability to build muscle, your ability to recover, like it's huge. it's huge. And it compounds because you're, you're stringing those, those better days of sleep together for so long that I wish I understood that better uh, when I was younger and it was more resilient and and didn't care as much about that because it's like investing, you know, it's like you 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 put a hundred dollars away every day. It doesn't sound like a lot of money right now, but you do that for months, you do that for years, you do that for decades. Now we're talking about a lot of money. Next question is from Marbear2307. How do you pick the weight for AMRAPs when starting out? AMRAP stands for as many reps as possible. Now before we get into like weight selection, I I, I just for people who aren't super familiar, this doesn't mean an AMRAP is not do as many reps as you can do regardless of form and technique and just move the bar or whatever. That's not, AMRAP is, and I wish they changed the name uh, so people would get it. It should be as many excellent reps as you could do as possible or as many reps as possible with good form. Good form, yeah. So the second your form is off, you're done. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of people mistaken this for keep going until you can't do anymore. No, no, no. Once your squat form is gone, <clears throat> overhead press starts to look different, your bench, whatever, you're done with the set. Okay. So that being said, this could be a really hard thing to pick because most of us, unless you train this way and you, you practice, you will underestimate, you typically underestimate, um, you know, how many reps you think you could do with a particular weight. So you look at a weight and be like, I think I could get 10 out. And then you'll get to 10 and be like, maybe I have two more. And then you'll get, you know, oh, I think I have two more. So unfortunately, I don't have a better answer than this, but you pick a weight that is a guess the first time, then your second set or third set typically gets a little bit more accurate. Well, I'm trying to think of what what programs we program this where we use traditional exercise. Normally, we use this on, like when we program it, body weight stuff like push-ups, pull-ups, yeah. dips. Map and, Strong and, has it in there. For and the reason why we typically do it is because we we know there's both men and women using the program and when there's a wide range of, of how many they can do how many someone can do and so instead of us saying like a generic answer of like 15 uh body weight push-ups that could be really hard for uh maybe a uh, my female client but really easy for my guy who can do 80 so we put things in there like as many reps as possible so and normally it's like program like this like uh, you're going to do push-ups, two sets, as many reps as possible. So that's me. Uh, the first set, I could rep out, say, 70 of them. And then the second set, I could rep out 50. That that same, another person could get 10 the first time and then five. And they're both doing as many reps as possible because it's a body weight movement like that. And so typically, that's how we program it. I rarely ever program like a, a bicep curl for as many reps as possible or um, a bench press for as many reps as possible. I just don't. I'm trying to think where we program that where it wouldn't be a body weight type of movement and it wouldn't be like that. Do you know off the top of your head, Doug? I don't. I think it is mainly body weight type. Yeah. Things. I think in strong maybe. we have some like it overhead press because they're, they're saying choose a weight. I'm like, where are we where are we choosing strong? I think we did some AMRAP sets in uh split, uh like I think laterals and stuff like that, if I'm mm. not mistaken. It's not a lot. Run the rack. I know we yeah. did that in PED. Mm, yeah. I wish to, um, I wish we had a little more clarity on the exercise because I think that would also uh, determine how I would give this person advice on how to choose a weight. I guess if you were choosing something like lateral raises or a traditional exercise, I would try and pick a weight that I think I'm going to get 12 or 15 reps. Yeah. That's what I would Definitely probably over ten. Yeah. So if I was doing if I was doing an, an AMRAP, I would probably pick a weight for the, like the types of exercise we were just saying, like a lateral raise, a bench press. Even if you were to do a bicep curl, I'd pick a weight that I think I should fall right around ten to fifteen. And I'm not really worried if it's north or south of that, but that's kind of how yeah. I'm trying to gauge the weight. I yeah, would really, say. we should rebrand this AMGRAP. Yeah. So what's that? <laughs> as many good reps as possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Next question is from depraved habitual self pleasuring. Wow! <laughs> Excuse you know, me. Like, you know what this is turning into? You know, there's like viral videos of the people pranking like the Peloton instructors uh, by putting funny names. by putting funny names and getting them to like you know get them like, like the plane crash where the guy got fired and is like bang ding ow like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, added yeah, all something these names wrong. and there's something uh, wrong. yeah. <laughs> I think I think Doug's starting to get trolled a little bit. I think, so. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, but this I, I but this is Justin. I know. I know his, <laughs> yeah. his handle. Yeah. I do this sometimes. So what's the best way to, to use, use the sauna? The sauna. Sauna. Yeah. The best uh, sit inside of it. That's yeah. probably the best yeah. way to do it. Don't, don't sit outside of it. Yeah. Don't sit on top of it. Probably I could tell you the best way not to use it, or should I say the worst way to use it? Was probably before bed. They show that. It can interrupt sleep if you raise your core body temperature right before you go to bed. So it's probably not a good idea to do it too close to bed. Post-workout, I believe to be the best. I think it, it with the in, improved blood flow, the growth hormone release. So I'll work out when I have an opportunity, when I have a chance. I'll work out, mm -hmm. not eat, right? So I have no meal yet. Go in, do 20 minutes. Um, and I notice it's like a, it's a little bit of an added stress, but I do get some better adaptation results from doing it. But other than that, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. When you look at the yeah. data, aside from before bed, they really how you show use that. it or using it at all. Cause there's data that shows supports using it. Using it is just incredibly beneficial. Oh no. Yeah. Well, no, I, I guess I'm thinking just time. I think yeah. I'm just thinking of the time uh, of day and stuff. Well, yeah. so I think what's more important and I think Huberman touches total, on total this. Total time. Right? Yeah. Total time. Like he, he's, he's, he's got two, uh, you know, clips on one on cold plunge, one on sauna, 
like to reap the most benefits you if you do a minimum of i can't remember what the sauna time is a week and how much the cold plunge is i want to say it's like 40 minutes maybe andrew can look this up for me what huberman says on this i believe it's 40 to 60 minutes of heat in the week and like 20 minutes of cold uh, something like that. I or think 15, you're right. Somewhere in that range. I know there was a study that was done on all cause mortality. And in the study, now, of course, I, I'm, I'm sure this could get extreme, but in the study, the more the better. So people who did it four days a week got better, was better mm. all cause mortality than people who did it three days a week. And they got better who did it than, than people who did it two days a week. That being said, this is a, uh, it is a stress on the body in the sense that you, you'll, you'll see if you ever use a sauna, You'll notice that you can go longer and withstand more the more what consistent it called, you are like with an it. Exercise mimicker, somewhat, somewhat, just because yeah. it raises the body temperature so and the core temperature. The mistake, and by the way, though, like I mean, uh, Doug has been told not to do it, right? So, mm. depending on um, what other stresses that you have going on in your life, it may not necessarily. You got to remember all these things: cold plunge, sauna. Uh, exercise, training, cardiovascular stuff where you're doing sprints and stuff. All these things are all, all, all stressors. And depending on what else you have going on in your life, you know, all just, just because it has studies attached to it to show its benefits may not necessarily always be beneficial, but I think there's a pretty generic, I'm, his smallest dose that it gives you the biggest bang is what I was looking for. Did you find it for me, Andrew, or no? Yeah. Um, it depends on what your, your goal is here, but the, the smallest amount in the sauna specifically is five to 20 minutes. If you're looking for overall cardiovascular health, general health, total one hour per week, split into one two or three sessions. Week. And if you're looking for growth hormone release, multiple sessions of 30 minutes each with cool down periods in between. So yeah. one hour a week, yeah. one hour a week on that. And then I think the, and then cold, you know what like I don't 20. like about that though, is there's such, it's like exercise. There's such an individual variance, yeah, yeah. you know, like, um, I know this for myself. If I overdo the sauna, it zaps me. Yeah. My energy's down. I feel like crap. Same. Um, so I, well, I, so, okay. Yes. Where I see it is, is total time in one session. Like if you did, uh, let's say 60 minutes in just a like week. Just like exercise. Yeah. If you yeah. did 60 minutes in one week, I can really like, like I'll, minutes, get a, I'll get a, a I'll get a headache sometimes if I go for a full hour straight. Yeah. But if I did 10 minutes every day, not yeah. bad at all. Yeah. I think, I think the way that someone should approach it is to start slow. If you feel fatigued from it, you probably overdid it. So start slow and then slowly, like with exercise, ramp up from there and then go up to a, a dose that is reasonable for you to sustain. Because like anything, I believe consistency is probably more important than intensity or oh, all definitely. that stuff. And hydrate. So, yeah, because someone might be like, oh, six days a week is better, but I can only do three. It's a waste of time type of deal. No, I, I would say go in, slowly work yourself up and then whatever works with your lifestyle that you can do consistently is what's going to give you the best long-term success and results. Look, if you like Mind Pump, go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free guides. We got free fitness guides for everybody. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano, and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.